Good morning and welcome to the Extension Connection. I'm Peggy Netzer, Family Nutrition Program Agent with the Burley County Extension Office. Here today with Katie Jonke, Bismarck Burley Public Health uh, Dietitian. And we're going to talk about getting back in the groove now that school started. <laughs> Jim, uh, Jim's ready to. That my bad. <laughs> so... You know, in the summer, a lot of people uh, have kids home or they're just a little more laid back with things, you know, bedtimes, meals, snacks, all that stuff. So um, let's uh, talk about what are some tips that we can give parents to help them get back into the routine and make it easy. Now that your kids are back in school all day, they come home, they want a snack, you got to get them to activities you got to make dinner and get them ready for bed and the next day and so how do we how do we ease that a little bit and I want to say people who are listening if you have any great tips that you are willing to share give us a call and we have uh, we have some prizes to give out today so give us a call and we will uh we'll send you a, a little gift in the mail uh six six Jim what is it six six seven six six three 663-1270. There it is. <laughs> 663-1270. Give us a call. All right. So, Katie, tell me one thing you do that helps save time. Planning ahead. Yes. Um, I think my lifesaver is my meal plan board. Yep. And so that's actually one of the uh, gifts is uh, one of the prizes that people can win is this uh is this great it magnets to your fridge it's awesome i use this actually for my own family plans your meals so you put down what you're gonna have for meals every day and then there's a grocery list with it too so you can put on there what do you need to make each of those meals I when think, do you do your planning um usually on the weekend sunday morning is i do kind sunday of mornings too when i um, gearing up for the week i don't always necessarily plan for saturday and sunday depending on just because there's a little bit more um fluctuation with that but it is definitely my lifesaver and my kids aren't even in school yet yeah mine either <laughs> um but it does save me time because getting home from work the kids are hungry there's a lot of things going on and being able to know at least what's for supper plus it keeps my husband from asking me what's for supper yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he knows too and it's just it helps too with budget because you aren't out to the grocery store once a week or what and then you're not just picking up for that meal but probably something else and um if you can plan ahead you'll save time you'll save money and i think that's really key to getting back um into the swing of things and then it helps build a balanced um healthy meal too for your family yeah you're not you're not running to grab something from a drive-thru or ordering pizza or whatever because you have a plan and you can uh you can just look at it. And so the day before, night before, whatever you need to pull from the freezer, you can pull. If you need to maybe prep some veggies, you can do that. Um, or that's what I do anyway. Do you uh, do you plan in leftover nights? Absolutely. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Clean yeah. out the fridge. Yeah. or And it, it is somebody or in my family, everybody might be eating something different, honestly. But it works. Um, but it works. Yeah. And it's just that is one. I probably have that twice a week week a leftover night twice a week also Um, and so that eliminates some meals so really you only have to plan maybe three four meals tops during your week um and if you you know make whatever it is you know make a little extra so there is um lunch for when you go to work and then you know the kids Mm -hmm. are hopefully eating lunch at school so you don't have to worry about them but then prepping Mm -hmm. those snacks too for when they get home or snacks at school yep um so one thing I want to talk about during this segment, before we have to take a break, is tools that you can use in your kitchen to make things easier. Um, we both love our slow cookers. Right? I can't wait because fall's coming <laughs> and now it's like slow cooker season. Not that I don't use it in the summer, but yeah. it you use heavily, your grill more in the summer, right? It's heavily used during the fall. So yeah, I love the slow cooker this time of year because in the summer it's nice to have a hot meal without having to heat up your kitchen or if it's 100 degrees nobody really wants to be standing out grilling you know it's just too hot for that and so I feel like the slow cooker is good for the summer too but yeah fall is when you really start to look forward to those slow cooker meals because it's get it gets cold outside and you come home and your house has a nice dinner smell and 
And you can do so many different recipes. It doesn't just have to be a roast and potatoes or soup. I mean, you can do pasta dishes. You can do, um, you know, a mixed vegetable dish. Really anything. (laughs) And it just, it's all about um, planning ahead for that and you know, having the right ingredients, adding them at the right time. Because not going to lie, I've made some slow cook meals and it's like, oh, I put that in way too early. <laughs> noodles. Noodles are what I always have trouble with. If I, it seems like no matter when I put them in, I, I screw it up. <laughs> but um, yeah, so slow cooker is a really good, um, a good tool because dinner is ready and you don't really have to do anything. You might, when you get home from work or whatever you might have to throw in a couple of last ingredients like your noodles or dairy or whatever but you don't have to do much more than that to have it be ready um with that we should talk about some slow cooker safety stuff i suppose so um what do you mean there's slow (laughs) slow cooker safety tips yeah slow cooker safety tips so if anybody um yeah, that's another thing. We could have people call in about that, too, if you want to give us a call. Um, we, we'd we love to hear what your favorite things are to make in the slow cooker and uh, if you have any good tips for that. So uh, 663-1270 is our number here. Um, so I just want to give people a quick reminder that you want to make sure you're able to get your foods to the right temperature to kill any potentially dangerous bacteria. So that the biggest thing that we have to remind people about is don't put frozen meat in the slow cooker. That'll take a long time and it won't reach that proper temperature. Yeah. Um, you know, it's different than the oven. You can put Much a frozen <laughs> roast in the oven, but you can't in the slow cooker. Or also, frozen chicken. Um, ground beef. What about that, yes. Peggy? Ground beef. This is one that we hear about a lot people do it wrong it is not safe to put raw ground meat in your slow cooker i'll say it again not safe to put ground meat that has not been cooked in your slow cooker um ground meat needs to get to a pretty high temperature to be safe and it will likely not get high enough temp in the slow cooker and in addition to that there's a lot more potential for dangerous bacteria because when it's ground it comes from the outside of the meat and gets mixed all the way through so your best bet with that is just have prep some ground meat ahead of time have it in the freezer so that you can have it ready have it ready and then that you can throw it in whatever dish you are cooking yep. so we're going to take a quick break and talk more about freezer stuff when we come back Currently, it's 66. Get the app called Radio Pup for your iPhone and take us everywhere you go. Biz Market Man Dan's own Super Talk 1270. Good morning and welcome back to the Extension Connection. I'm Peggy Netzer, Family Nutrition Program Agent with the Burley County Extension Office, here with uh, Katie Junkie from Bismarck Burley Public Health. And we were just talking about tools that we use. Um, Providing some tips for families who are getting back in the groove now that uh, school has started. And um, we were talking about slow cookers and how great that is. Um, When we left, we were talking about uh, things that maybe need to not happen (laughs) because they're unsafe. So things like don't put frozen meat into the slow cooker because it won't get to the proper temperature to kill all the bacteria. Don't put raw ground meat, so hamburger, that kind of thing, into the slow cooker because it won't get to a high enough temperature to kill all the bacteria that has been mixed in when the meat was ground. Um, Other things, you know, noodles, we talked about noodles are kind of kind of difficult um the filling it too full can also it doesn't circulate as well you have to have a certain amount in there you don't want it too empty or too full so it has to be at least half full but no more than two-thirds so be aware somewhere in the middle there because if you get it too full yeah it can't get to the right temperature because there's not enough room in the pot for the um, steam to circulate and the heat to get to your food. But if it's too empty, not full enough, um, it doesn't have enough, uh, basically enough moisture and enough product in there so it could dry out and 
not be very good. So for safety and quality reasons, you want to make sure you have the proper amount in there. So um, since we're talking about frozen meat, one other thing that a lot of families do, a lot of people in general, not just families, I guess, to help speed up the dinner making process is freezer meals. I love freezer meals. I know it. <laughs> um, that is actually one thing that I take a, you know, a day mm-hmm. out of probably every quarter of the year. Um, so every probably three to four months and do a big day's worth of freezer meals and can get anywhere between 15 and 20 meals, um, which makes multiple servings too. Right. It doesn't just feed my family for one time. And that lasts us for quite a while because it, we don't use a freezer meal every night. Mm-hmm. Therefore, those times where things are crazy, you might work late or you're running to an activity, mm-hmm. um, just busy where you wouldn't have time to prep a, a full meal when you would get home. So yeah. those are definitely something to consider and look into if you are interested. Um, but there are safety concerns with freezer meals right. as well. And you know, it's I like that you said it's not for every night because that's part of the meal planning process that's going to help you because looking at that um looking at your schedule for the week you know the nights where you're just not going to have time to cook and so those are the nights that you put on freezer meal or you put on leftovers <laughs> or maybe you put on frozen pizza I or don't know. a bowl of cereal and yep. yogurt or whatever it might be Fruit, um yeah. you it's, can have breakfast for dinner i think that's sure probably can. one of my most favorite <laughs> meals actually um yep. just th- remember balance um yeah. is key f- to have that healthy um meal for your family um, especially for the kids, you know, they need that nutrition to keep them going. They're busy in school and activities. Um, some are in sports, some are in extracurricular activities. So whatever they might be, you um, are going to be running here and there, but definitely um, keep that nutrition quality of your meals in mind. Right. And, you know, freezer to slow cooker meals are double time saver. But... We just said don't put frozen stuff into your slow cooker. So what do you do, Katie? So if I know, let's say, okay, it's Wednesday today. So let's say I had one for Friday. My freezer, my crock pot freezer meal will be taken out today to, so that it is thawed and ready to go Friday morning. And put into your refrigerator. Yes, in my refrigerator, <laughs> not on my counter or my sink. Um And so that's something that you do have to plan ahead, but having that meal plan written down, you can see, oh, I have a freezer meal coming up, but it needs to thaw. So taking that out. And that does, that takes a whole, what, 30 Mm -hmm. seconds to run to the freezer, grab it and put it in your fridge. Um, And so it's just having that um, set aside too, because you definitely don't want it frozen going into that slow cooker. Yeah. So I think it maybe was just yesterday. Um, someone in our office said to me, you know, the meal planning thing, I thought I needed to do it when I have time. So I should plan to cook because I know I'm not busy on those nights. And then she said, but I've realized that it's the nights when I'm busy that I need the plan the most. And so I I feel like that's something that people need to just recognize, you know, when you're busy, that's when you need that plan. When you have time to cook, maybe you do take some time to stop at the store and see what looks good and go home and make it. But it, it's when you're tight, when your schedule is tight on time and, you you know, you only have mm-hmm. a half an hour to get home before you got to take a kid to soccer or something. That's when it really does make a difference for people, I think. Um, yeah. And I mean, because there's nights where I might want to cook a little bit nicer of a meal so it's a little bit more prep time and and those are the days where I'm home at a regular time Mm -hmm. we don't have to run anywhere we don't have anything going on and we can just enjoy the cooking process because that is part of it too um spending time with the family and eating family meals um and so don't think that you have to be so strict on your freezer meals or crock pot every night you can make a meal from scratch without having a plan just say maybe it's chicken night and you just know that it's going to be a chicken meal and see what inspires you and you know (laughs) or maybe it's uh taco night but you don't know is it burritos is it tacos is it a soup you know whatever it might be at our house saturday night is typically farmer's market night because we will go to the market and just see kind of what's there and we'll grab some stuff, um, meat, bread, whatever, with our veggies, and that's what we have. So 
we just put on there farmers market or <laughs> you know you could put you could just put on there grill Yep. And whatever you feel like grilling, that's what it's going to be that night. Um, Another idea to get the kids involved and they're more apt to want to eat the meal is do like a kid's choice night. So the kids get to choose what they have, Mm -hmm. you know, and help them, you know, if they want macaroni and cheese. Okay, fine. Well, how what else can you add to it to balance out the meal? Um, Or, you know, what how can you make it more fun and um, more nutritious than just a box of mac and cheese? So, you know, involve them. Um, and you can do a lot with a bag of ramen noodles mm-hmm. or a box of macaroni and cheese. or a, You can use a prepackaged food and make it um, healthier than what it is. So yeah. keep that in mind, too. Yep. And I honestly, I feel like stuff like that is in most homes because yep. it is quick and it's easy convenient. and convenient. And so those little things like adding a bag of frozen vegetables to something is so simple and really inexpensive, but nutritionally, it has a big difference. Big yep. difference in your you know, meal. throwing a banana on the side or a piece of fruit, whatever you have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, veggies, your piece of fruit, and your box of macaroni and cheese. I mean, you're balancing it out with those fruits and vegetables, which is so important too. And we want to encourage that um, in children and adults. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little about kids. And not eating fruits and vegetables. I hear from so many people how hard it is to get their kids to eat fruits and vegetables. And we talk about that a lot. But one thing that I do at my house that helps take some stress out of the dinner making process is that while I am cooking or warming or dishing up things, I have fruits and vegetables cut up and available for the kids. To snack on as your to snack yep. on. Um, that's a great tip, I think, because they're hungry and mm-hmm. you're hungry. And so you're probably going to be snacking on them, too. And so just yep. having them available and ready to go, whether they stop by and pick them or not, they're available. And that's the yep. role as the caregiver in the home is to have these things available for them and prepped. You can't expect your kid to eat celery if it's sitting in the stock in the in fridge. The bundle. Yep. You know, a a six, seven-year-old's not going to go cut it up and probably right. not a 15-year-old either. So, <laughs> um, you know, having that, have it or ready to go. Or a 40-year-old. <laughs> or even an adult. An adult. Um, you know, so having it cut up and even, you know, on the day, you know, Sunday morning, if you're planning your meals for the week, cut up your fruits and veggies for the week or, you know, portion them out or whatever it is that you do um, so that they are ready to go for snacking. I think that's um, probably one of the most convenient time-saving tips Mm -hmm. but also a way to encourage fruits and vegetables in the home yeah and I know a lot of parents don't want to give snacks too close to dinner time because then their kid won't eat at dinner but for me I feel like if they're filling up on fruits and vegetables I'm okay if they don't eat whatever I I am or don't eat much of what I made for dinner yep because you know like the other night my one and a half year old wanted a banana Mm -hmm. and he ate the whole banana of course right about 10 (laughs) minutes before dinner and then he didn't um, wasn't as keen to eat his main dish, mm-hmm. but I was okay with it because he ate a banana. So it's different if he, you know, had a, who knows what, a donut. I mean, yeah. that's completely <laughs> different. So um, keeping that in mind and, you know, again, if they are filling up on those fruits and veggies, at least, you know, they're getting some, um, some nutrition into them yeah. when meal time does come. So back to freezer meals for a little bit before we take a break here. Um, what are your favorite things to make, Katie, and stick in the freezer? I like chicken meals. So chicken with like a teriyaki sauce or a barbecue sauce or chicken and rice. Chicken things. and Chicken's easy because you can take it raw. You can throw it in, add your ingredients, and it's ready to go there's yep. really it's really versatile versatile and, and it's pretty inexpensive as far as meat um like a concerned. cream of chicken soup type thing you know throw some carrots potatoes i mean it's all ready to go and yeah. um the chicken freezer meals are the ones that take the less time make the less mess um yep. you know and the they're thing the is, fastest it's good to have some sort of theme when you're doing freezer meals absolutely so whether it's chicken or it's Mexican or it's pasta or yeah, whatever it is it's good to have a theme because it makes it easier for shopping it makes it easier for prepping um, and you know sometimes you put the stuff in a bag 
And then you have to thaw it and cook it, right? Yes. Sometimes you just put it in a foil pan and you can take it straight from the freezer and into the oven. Yep. So that theme is definitely important. I did it in the beginning and I was cooking pasta and chicken and this and it was a nightmare. It, um, it was so it was stressful. More time, yeah, more time stressful. and more work. Where the next time I did it, I did just chicken meals. Oh, and then it was just, you know, Mexican yeah. or cuz yeah, all the ingredients are the same and it's just streamlined the process much more. So. All right. I think when we come back we're going to talk about uh, snacks. So, uh, we're going to take a quick break. Currently, it's 66. You're never more than a few minutes from a weather update here on Super Talk 1270. Good morning and welcome back to the Extension Connection. I'm Peggy Netzer, Family Nutrition Program Agent at the Burley County Extension Office, here with Katie Jonke from Bismarck Burley Public Health. And we invite you to call in uh, 663-1270 and share your tips for getting back into the back-to-school routine. Um, We've talked about a few things. Um, Meal planning, so planning ahead to save time, energy, money, Sanity. <laughs> Sanity. All those good things those that things. come with um, routine and yeah, back to school. Slow cooker and freezer meals as tools to help with that. And um, I want to talk about snacks because, well, first, kids take snacks to school. And, you know, we've heard some issues with parents who have trouble deciding on appropriate snacks to send or things that are acceptable in the classroom because there are restrictions that kind of thing um also when they get home they're always hungry always always hungry so you know some of the kids eat lunch pretty early in the day and so it makes sense that by 3 30 when they get home they're hungry and if you think you know as an adult I have an afternoon snack at work, Mm -hmm. so why should we expect the children to go without something when they get home? Um, Snacks are meant for a reason, and they're to fill the gap between meals. Um, You know, I think sometimes snacks get a bad rapport because they are sometimes used inappropriately, Mm -hmm. Um, but they are meant for a reason, and they are to help maintain a healthy weight and um, a healthy lifestyle. So, right. They are used, when used appropriately, they can be so helpful for So we you. have um, 10 tips, right? 10 tips for snacks. So run them down. Save time by slicing veggies um, and or fruits. We already talked about this kind of earlier yep, on. With but, meal planning. You know, taking it one day and slicing all your produce or prepping all your snacks um, in containers or baggies so that they're easy to grab and go. Even having like a bin in your refrigerator or using one of the produce drawers so snacks are all lined up so your child knows that they can go to this drawer and grab whatever they want from here and it be an appropriate snack for them. Um, I think that'll be great when my kids are older or our kids are older. That'll be a good way to do it. Um, Mixing it up. So whether it's... um, dried fruit and a trail mix and I know you know that has some restrictions when we're talking about school snacks but a snack at home you could do a trail mix um smoothies um especially when you're home because and depending on the age of your child um you might not want to give them a blender blender, but um (laughs) that is something that you could even have ready to go in the freezer and let it thaw in the Mm -hmm. fridge if you come home on lunch or something like that um just having a glass of milk is a great snack. Milk provides a lot of nutrition um, in an eight ounce serving. And so they get their protein, they get their calcium, vitamin D. Um, they get yeah. a lot out of just an eight ounce glass of milk. So, you know, having graham crackers and milk. I know we had that when mm-hmm. I was in school. And we used um, to have that for, yeah. I look forward to that for snack. everything. So they get a, you know, a little treat kind of with the graham cracker, but they're um, complementing that with a glass of milk. Mm-hmm. Uh, Choosing whole grains when we're talking about cereal or bread options. So if they have a peanut butter sandwich or a meat and cheese sandwich using whole grain bread, um, having popcorn, which is a whole or if grain. they're having cereal. Cereal. Don't choose the um, sugary ones. Choose Cheerios, them. you know, things like that. Nibble on lean protein. So things like uh, low-sodium deli meat, um, 
with an app with apples or ch- a cheese stick, um, Greek yogurt um, or yogurt in general. You know, those are all having those options available. And it doesn't have to be much for a snack. You know, anywhere from 100 to 200 calories is really all that is needed for an appropriate snack. Well, and for, you know, for smaller kids, you don't want to give them nuts. But for older kids, you know, some almonds in a trail mix or in, yep. you know, whatever with their yogurt and fruit is is a good option. Um, number six, keep an eye on the size. So that's referencing portion size because this is where snacks kind of fall off Um because snacks can turn into meal-sized helpings, Mm -hmm. and that's where they can be a problem. Um, So having those snack-sized baggies, which I think are great because you can only fit, you really can only fit so much in there. (laughs) And it is, it it ends up being an appropriate portion. Even like a trail mix, which is easy to kind of overdo on, Mm -hmm. that really fits the appropriate amount. Um, Fruits are quick and easy. Um, Fruits are kind of like, the first grab and go meal, if you think about it, apples, bananas, fast food, right there. Fast food, yeah. You grab it and you go. Um, so even just having the simple ones, apples and bananas, right on the counter, you know, pears they, in our house, things, peaches. Um, yep, you can just eat, wash them, and eat them. You don't no yep. cutting, no peeling. Um, and you know, talking about school snacks, every classroom, it's okay to bring a piece of fruit. Absolutely. Um, even dried fruit, raisins, um, is an you know, grab and go option, but that fresh produce, um, it's easy. easy. Thinking of convenience. So having some of those prepackaged or single serving items, string cheese, yogurt, um, but that one's a convenience. So just because it's a prepackaged item doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, bad or unhealthy. Um, you are going to pay for convenience, but sometimes Mm -hmm. you got to, you have to, and in I think in this time frame where we're all busy and on the go, that is really important. Um, be cautious of the sugar, and so limiting cookies and pastries, candies, um, and then sugar-sweetened beverages, which is big. So make sure they're not coming at home and having a large glass of Kool-Aid yeah. or sugar, you know, a fruit drink. You know, at least offer them 100% fruit juice or water is best. Have a fun water bottle ready for them to go. And then prepare homemade goodies is our last tip. So, I mean, things like um, a trail mix, energy balls. I think that's kind of a pretty common thing people are aware Mm -hmm. of. So just kind of like a peanut butter ball of oatmeal and cereals, nuts, chocolate chips you can throw in there different grains um yeah but don't be afraid to muffins mini muffins on your own you know what it is at our house right now brand muffins oh (laughs) i have some in the freezer (laughs) yeah the the kids are obsessed with them the other day it was hot outside and my three-year-old i said if he wanted he could go in and get a popsicle so i'm thinking here he went into the house to get a popsicle but I had like a proud mom moment when out he comes with the bag of energy balls and he wanted one instead. <laughs> and so that's what he had instead of a popsicle, which I said he could have as a treat because we were outside playing and it was just a hot day. Um, but he chose to go the healthier route and have an energy ball. And so I felt kind of good as a mom yeah. right there that he knew where to find them, which is why I have them in the spot. And um He's seen them enough and we've talked about them and he's helped make them where he's, he likes them that much. So even at a small age, um, you can instill some of those healthy behaviors. Right. Um, speaking of healthy behaviors, let's talk about tips for parents who are having trouble getting their kids to eat fruits and vegetables. You know, some kids do it just because they're used to fruits and vegetables, but some kids will fight it no matter what. It'll be corn and potatoes is all yeah. they want. <laughs> Peas, corn, and potatoes, the starchy veggies are, and they're okay. They're fine. They do have nutritional value to them, but we need to branch out a little bit because some fruits and veggies, different colors, provide us with different nutrients, and we need to just think like a rainbow and eat like a rainbow when we're talking about fruits and veggies. So what kind of tips do you have, So the funny thing is, in my house, my two-year-old, the common things like potatoes and peas and corn... Those are the things that he will not eat. He'll eat corn on the cob, but he doesn't like peas or potatoes. He hates potatoes. I don't know why. He's a weird kid. Um, But he eats a lot of other things. So um, 
the first one is something that you kind of said is smoothies. So use a smoothie. Make it. It's a great way to hide things some, too. Yeah. Make it with some spinach. Could be like Can a Ninja Turtle smoothie or something. Yeah, we made green smoothies at our house, and then I froze them into popsicles. Yep, so I've done that as it's well. It's basically Greek yogurt and some blueberries and some uh, spinach in ours. And then we freeze them into popsicles. And then when it's so hot out, you get a popsicle, which is actually a, a really smoothie. healthy <laughs> treat, right? Um, dips. Do you guys do dips? Um. With, like, when we have pancakes, I have a yogurt dip instead of syrup. Um, or I give yogurt a yogurt dip with the fruit. Mm -hmm. Kids love to dip anything. Yeah. I We don't do a lot of dip at our house. Like, our kids just aren't that into it. But at our daycare, she said many times that all of the other kids besides mine need to have a dip with their vegetables. They're not going to eat any vegetables unless they have a dip. Yeah, I don't... So you can just make um, a healthy dip. Like you said, yogurt dip yep. or make hummus. hummus. So a healthy dip um, goes good with vegetables or you can make a fruit dip with yogurt too. Um, if One thing, if your kids are requesting a dip, you know, I know like a ranch is very popular. Yes. Just portion control it. Um, make, have them get a little container so that okay, if they do get dipped, this is all they get. Mm -hmm. Um. So they're so aware of portions. They're aware of portion. They are still eating their vegetables, which is what we want. Um, but again, you have to be careful with those dips because that can sometimes outweigh the nutritional value of the vegetables you are eating. Right. So we, that was only two. So we have eight more tips for getting your kids to eat more fruits and vegetables. And we'll talk about that when we get back. Currently, it's 72. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270 and online at supertalk1270.com. Good morning and welcome back to the Extension Connection. We, When we left, we were talking about tips to get kids to eat their fruits and vegetables. Um, so we talked about smoothies and dips. The next one on the list is caterpillar kebabs. Do you, do you do kebabs? Um, that is probably one I don't do very often, just because you got to get like a skewer. Because kids thing are young and, and they'll poke yeah. themselves. So, um, <laughs> but I have done like for a party we did, I mm -hmm. did cars mm. out of apples and grapes. So yeah. I have made you can make a lot of fun yep. um, things with that. But yeah, if you had and Pinterest is a good resource for this kind of thing. Oh, don't you if think? you want a fruit and vegetable like something or other. Go Pinterest. to Pinterest. And there's healthy <laughs> sites on Pinterest. Like, yeah. there's dietitians that post recipes. I mean, there's healthy work sites. We have a bunch for sites. extension. Yeah. And so definitely search for Pinterest and you can find a lot of fun ones. And bring your kids on there. You know, maybe say, mm -hmm. pick two or three you want to try making. Yep. So kebabs, you can do either fruits or vegetables on a kebab. I, like you, don't do kebabs because I have a two-year-old and a baby and someone will get poked. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> so but maybe just lining them up. Maybe that would be an option. Yeah. Um. So next one, personalized pizza. <gasps> I these are my favorite. So, do you uh, watch public television at all with your kids? No. Do you know about Daniel Tiger? No. Okay. Well, Daniel Tiger has a show on PBS that my kid loves. And the other day, they went and they went to a pizza shop, and a kid made pizza. So now my kid wants to make pizza he thinks i should take him to like i don't know a and b or something and make a pizza so that's not going to happen but maybe we can make pizza at home the personalized ones are nice english muffins yeah sauce pita toppings, bread pita yeah you said you have bagels at home you can use bagels, a bagel little cheese whatever you can microwave it you can pop it in the oven toaster they're, oven we use they're pretty awesome and Yep. The kids love them because they're getting pizza, right. but it still qualifies as a snack because of the portion size. Yep. Or, you know, if you want to make it for dinner, give them a couple. Let them put as many vegetables as they want on there. You can make faces, which the kids love. Mm-hmm. They do. So, next one. Fruity peanut butterfly. I might have to explain this one, huh? Um, start with carrots or celery for the body. Attach wings of apples uh, and then decorate with grapes or dried fruit. 
Oh, so kind of similar to the Ants tip, on a Log, yep. which is another tip. Bugs on a um, Log is another one. So basically just making a animal, again, out of yep. your um, your fruits or Make your veggies. Shape. For sure. Frosty fruits. So frozen fruit. Do you have frozen fruit at home? I don't um, right now, but we, <laughs> that's because we just used you ours up. And um, I do like frozen fruit more in the winter. Um, yeah. I don't use it as much in the summertime. Because we have access to fresh. But it summer. is nice for smoothies to have that yep. frozen fruit on hand. Um, yep. I think if you were out of popsicles, frozen fruit would be a really good alternative. For older kids, frozen grapes is a great thing. Yeah. It's refreshing. They're I love they're frozen great. Grapes. Um but again, probably for your older kids, um when they're past the age where it's a choking hazard. Choking hazard. <laughs> yeah. Um So, we, bugs on a log we talked about. Um I know this about you, Katie. You don't like raisins. I don't like raisins. So, for people who don't like raisins, they can use Cranberries, cranberries or cherries or even any nuts. other dried fruit um, instead as a little treat i have used mini chocolate chips mm-hmm. used just a few of those so you ca- kind of make it more of a little dessert or a treat but mm-hmm. really three mini chocolate chips is not, not gonna do deal. overboard <laughs> so um yeah. i have used those as an alternative yeah trail mix we talked about that earlier, how it's easy way to throw in some And it doesn't fruits. have to be a nut-based trail mix either. No. I mean, it can be, I've done it like clean out the cereal boxes, mm-hmm. trail mix, add some dried fruit or um, whatever it might be. And it's kind of just a random randomness yeah. mix. But know that it doesn't have to be nut-based. So if you do have that nut allergy or you are thinking of, you know, for school snacks, um, yep. you don't have to put nuts in. That is one way to add nutritional value, but... Um, it's not. It's not a ne- required. Yeah, it's not a requirement for a trail mix. Yep. All right. Potato person is number nine. Decorate half a baked potato. Use sliced cherry tomatoes, peas, and low-fat cheese to make a funny face. So a baked potato as a snack. Mm-hmm. Not something I think somebody people think about regularly. Um, but baked potatoes are easy. You can yeah. have them ready to go and just heat it up. Heat and it throw up. Some face on there. Um, even as a lunch option for you as a parent or a yeah. caregiver, um, that's a nice um, meal to go off of. Sure would be. I hadn't thought of that either, but like I said, potatoes are not big in our house. Um, number 10 says, put your kid in charge. So let them choose something. Let them arrange the fruits and veggies in a design if they're older, they can look at Pinterest and come up with something, or they can tell you what they're looking for, and you can search it out for them and let them pick something to follow. Let them pick at the grocery store. Um, yeah. You know, give them a, a challenge or a task to go um, and say, I want you to go find me a orange fruit or mm-hmm. a green vegetable or whatever it is, um, or just say, here's a dollar, go pick out something. And give that give them that freedom to choose um, and they're going to be really excited to eat it and incorporate it into your meal. Yeah. And many years ago, I know you know this story, Katie. And I'm going to give credit here because a lot of folks in our community know this lady. Um, our friend Wanda Agnew used to be, um, she's out at United Tribes now, but she used to be with Public Health. And many years ago, she told me that when her kids were small, you know, parents sometimes have a challenge going to the grocery store with their kids because kids want everything. And she said what she did is if the kids were behaving, they got to pick a reward of one item from the produce section at the grocery store. And I thought, that is genius, Wanda. (laughs) Because you're getting your kids to eat a fruit or vegetable because they're choosing it as a reward. So of course they're going to eat it. It's their reward. So you're winning and they're behaving in the store. So you're winning twice. Plus then you're getting fruits and veggies for your house, yeah. which is like a three-time <laughs> win. Um, yep. So yeah, great method. And then to, your kids are quiet on the way home because they're eating. Um, although <laughs> knowing my kids, it would be like the watermelon and yeah. they'd want to eat it in the car. <laughs> so, um, yep. but again, making them take have ownership over that um, yeah. can really help with the pickiness and the fight sometimes the fight to eat your fr- the fruits and veggies at meal time right 
Um, since we're talking about kids and fruits and veggies, I want to talk about the American Heart Association is doing a life challenge right now. A life is why life family is why. health challenge, um, which focuses on promoting healthy family living healthy lifestyles as a family. And that is key. I want to reiterate that, that it's family involvement because you can't expect your children to eat healthy and have healthy habits if you are not doing them as well. They look to you as role models. um, And so this needs to be done as a family unit. Yep. So this week is the kickoff. Yesterday, actually, was the kickoff for the Life is Why Healthy Family Challenge. And if people want more information, they can go to heart.org, right? Yep. And it is on their Facebook page. That's actually where the challenge is done is via Facebook. Yeah. It's an online challenge. So if you're interested, go ahead and take a look at it. Um, And it will go through different things. This week's fruits and veggies. Then we talk about not in the right order, but there's um, sodium and sweetened drinks or Mm -hmm. limiting sweetened drinks. And then physical activity are the other topics. Um, So... If you, that is something you're interested in, again, yeah, go to heart.org um, or visit the Facebook page. Yeah, and like you said, more. this week is fruits and veggies, so maybe they have more tips than what we shared about getting your kids to eat the fruits and veggies. Um, they also have great recipes. They do. Um, that are family friendly. Um, <laughs> we've actually tested some of them we and did. approved. We used um, one last night at Dan's Supermarket for our recipe demonstration. We made some, if you if anybody wants to look it up on their site, um, mango salsa, except Dan's was out of mangoes, and so we made peach salsa using the mango salsa recipe, and it easy was substitute. really good. Um, and so just keep that in mind that um, they do have recipes online, and they do meet then all American Heart Association guidelines. So low in sodium, um, low in fat, nutrient-dense, things that a lot of families are looking for. Right. All right. Um, So just a quick reminder that we want to encourage people to do a meal planning and use some of the stuff that we shared um, as a way to make this transition time a little bit easier on folks. And if you have any questions, you can give a call to our office, 221-6865. We will be back in two weeks.